Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this video will be a summary of all of the relationship garbage that we learned. And basically this video is just going to be like all of it in one and it's going to be awesome and it's going to make a whole lot more sense after this. So the very first thing that you need to realize when it comes to relationships is that there's not always a defined relationship for every circumstance. And it's sometimes you have, it's something that you have to decide on your own. So in my old database design series, which if you want to check that out, uh, just go to my YouTube channel. A lot of people were confused about, okay, is a student to class, is that a one-to-one -one or one-to-many or a many-to-many -many relationship? Well, that's something that you're actually going to have to decide on your own sometimes. So you have to think logically about the application of the relationship. So let's think of the example of a class and a professor. What kind of relationship is that? I don't know, let's try to find out. So we have the class and then we have the professor. People would ask me, like, okay, what kind of relationship is this? Well, it depends on the application. If it's I mean, it can literally be all three. It just depends on what you need for your application. If it's a one-to-one -one relationship, that means a class can be taught by one professor, and a professor can teach one class. If it's a one-to-many relationship, that means either a class can be taught by one professor, and a professor can teach many classes, or the opposite, a class can be taught by many professors, but a professor can teach only one class or it can be a many-to-many -many relationship, a professor can teach multiple classes that can be taught by multiple professors. So it depends on the college, because some colleges are going to allow a class to be taught by multiple professors. Other colleges are not going to allow that. So that depends on the application of the database. If I'm building a database for a college that does allow multiple professors for a class, that means it's a many-to-many -many relationship because many professors teach many classes, many classes are taught by many professors. Right, so when it comes to designing one-to-one, -to one-to-many, and many-to-many, -many, I'll show you how to do all three of those for a class to professor. All right, so if we have one-to-one, -one, we could have, for example, we could have uh, the professor, right? We could have a professor table. I don't even know how to spell, we'll just put prof. Uh, I don't know if there's two F's, I don't know, who cares. Professor table, right? If it's a one-to-one -one relationship, we could have the professor ID, the uh, name of the professor, and then we could have a class. That's the class that they teach, and it's the only class that they teach. That class is only taught by that professor. That was, that's how you store a one-to-one -one relationship. And typically you're not going to do that with another entity. When, it's, when it comes to like a name, you typically will do that because the name is just assigned to that person. A class can generally, I mean typically professors can teach multiple classes unless you're some kind of adjunct teacher. But class, in this case, is a one-to-one -one relationship. If we wanted to make it a one-to-many relationship, well then we would break off class here, get a new table, class, we have a class ID, and here we could put more information about the class. So we'd have the class name. This is the most common way of storing information on two tables. You very, very rarely store a one-to-one -one relationship over multiple tables, but it is possible. We talked about that earlier. And we'd have class name, and then we could have more information about the class. And then we have a foreign key, class ID. That would make this the parent because class ID points to class ID. If you wanted this to be the parent, well then we would switch that. We would make professor ID, which would probably be the most logical way to do that. But you have to keep that in mind because it can be a one to many direction a one-to-many this direction, or it can be a one-to-many this direction. 
and obviously typically the class is going to be the many side because a class can be taught by multiple I mean a professor can teach multiple classes that means the professor is on the the one side the many is the class which means we need to give the professor ID on this side so the prof, the prof ID is a foreign key referencing the prof ID in the professor's table. That is how you draw a one-to-many relationship this direction, one-to-many, parent-child. Now if we wanted to make that a many-to-many -many relationship, we would actually have to break this up even farther into three tables. So now we have the professor's table, and then we have the class table, and then we have the um, probably class professor's table, which is the inter intermediary table. So we have this table here, this table here, this table here. This, these all, uh, this will have an ID, professor ID, and this will have an ID, class ID. Then you reference this in this intermediary table where we'd have Professor ID of like 6 with the class of 7, Professor ID of 6 with the class of 8, which is basically saying this professor with the ID of 6 is teaching two classes. Now uh, when it comes to IDs for this table, this whole uh, thing can be an ID in itself, or if you want you can give it a new ID to say class professor ID. And uh, that's kind of unrelated, so that's pretty much, we'll get into that later. But that is pretty much the sum of designing relationships. One to one is typically in one table. One to many is two tables with the child having a foreign key pointing to the parent. And then a many to many has two, two uh, parents with the intermediary being the child pointing back to both of the parents. Hopefully that is all crystal clear and awesome because now you literally know how to design every uh, binary relationship in database design. And by binary, I mean a relationship between two tables. So you can have a binary relationship, which we talked about. There's one-to-one -one over two tables, there's one-to-many over two tables, and there's many-to-many -many over two tables logically. But then we have to break those up into the best way to, to store those to store those in a database. But this is basically binary because we're talking about two entities, a class and a professor, a student and a class. You can have uh, relationships between multiple tables, but that is something, I'm sorry, multiple entities, but that is something we will have to address in a future video. So yeah, glad you got to understand all that, so thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we will be diving into, I believe, keys. So yeah, that's going to be sweet, so I will see you then. Subscribe.